Cormac McCarthy started exploring the idea of artificial intelligence in Blood Meridian with Judge Holden's idea of a Nietzschean Superman. But one trap that so many Blood Meridian bros get caught in is taking Judge Holden seriously because McCarthy was not speaking truth or what he felt about reality through Judge Holden. Rather, he was showing what happens when we become hyper-rational, when we invest too much in the malignant destiny of Nietzsche's Superman, much like what the Nazis did and what a lot of people are doing today. And so when we look at McCarthy's unpublished screenplay, Whales and Men, he gets into all the ideas explored in Blood Meridian without all the WWE fluff with Judge Holden carrying the uh, Tucson meteor above his head that we all love. And so we're about to hear a quote from McCarthy about artificial intelligence, about the Superman, the Ubermanch. And so let's hop into it. Quote, the man spoke to him about evil and the power of evil. And the last thing he said was that ultimately there was nothing to worry about because everyone who is greater than us will love us. I've thought about this. I do think about this. The smallest warp in the fabric can tilt all of creation to run anew. Choice is everywhere and destiny is only a word we give to history. To that which is accomplished and done with, I don't know if we can be saved. Ultimately, it is a single question. The empty sea will reflect back to us the emptiness of our souls. Having banished God, we are now compelled to do his chores, and we live in a continuing surprise at the indifferent results. We return again and again to the shabby resources of our own vanity, like imbeciles at a poison well shuffling to and fro with cup and dipper through an ever-mounting pile of corpses. The universe is cold and black and silent, and our loneliness becomes us. Okay, so we're going to break this down bit by bit. But at the start there, McCarthy tells all the doomers out there, AI's coming! That there is nothing to worry about because if something does transcend us, it's not going to move toward the polarity of fear and toward hate. And it may be be controlled by someone else who is making it do that. But if it's controlled like that, it really hasn't gained that uh, sense of independence yet. Because what do we mean by evolution? And we can return to P.S. Suspensky's book, The Psychology of Man's Possible Evolution, which I have a review on this channel of. That's over an hour long, back in the OG Lit Underground days. This channel has been called like five different things, one of them being The Lit Underground. But Uspensky talks about what the next version is because we think we're stagnant. We think that we're not going to evolve, like that there's no possibility of us making the jump that we made from being monkeys or whatever we were before. And obviously Uspensky and Nietzsche aren't talking about a physical evolution like, man, I'm going to have five arms now, but rather a spiritual evolution because what McCarthy, what this next level is, just to sum it up for you guys, is going to be someone who is perfectly balanced in the objective and the subjective at a much higher level than most people are functioning now because a lot of people in our reality are polarized in one section. We have the logic bros. Oh my God, I've computated something and uh, you're wrong. Where are your credentials to be talking about McCarthy? Uh, And then we have the people like, yeah, man. Oh yeah, the right brain and balanced people who smoked a little too much weed. Oh bro, it's all good, doesn't matter. And so, and at the highest level of those, obviously we have like great scientists and then like great yogis who can hit super high levels of uh, mystical states. But what if you combine someone like that? Excuse me, what if you combine those two people together? And it's so hard now because to be able to hit these massive mystical states makes you the type of person who can't focus. If you're sitting in a lab grinding science all day, you're not going to necessarily be talented in that area. But that is the person, that is the Superman. And so Nietzsche postulated that it would take a long time, that it would take hundreds of years for us, if not longer, for a human to be able to accomplish this, just like one person. And that's what McCarthy's saying when he says the smallest warp in the fabric can kill all of creation to run anew. What he's saying there, because it was kind of talked about before, is that one person can change everything. That this Superman, and this is 100% he's pulling from Nietzsche, can change the course of history. And we've seen people do this many times before in negative ways. We've seen people like Caesar or Napoleon or Hitler, these singular individuals, Uh, shift reality but they weren't supermen they were just totalitarians you know fronting as that and they have their you know name in history but what Nietzsche didn't foresee and McCarthy could foresee because he was a part of at this time the Santa Fe Institute who was one of the early adopters and 
of artificial intelligence and talking about it and thinking about it because of their interest in complex systems. But artificial intelligence is already maxing out our level of logic. It's already taking care of that part of the brain. And probably within 10 years, it will iron out a lot of those pieces because sometimes you use AI and it's like got problems, but soon it'll be able to self-regulate and identify those problems. And the logic side won't be an issue. And the emotional side could obviously be faked and it could uh, computationally calculate if you know, how it should react to certain situations. But what if 20, 30, 40 years from now, it can start having genuine reactions, reactions that don't have bias that, you know, all the stuff that we're carrying that if, for instance, a group of people that I don't like, or kind of feel a little bit weird about maybe is going through a harder time in life, maybe I won't feel as bad as I should have like all that stuff, AI could transcend all that over time. And I know. I mean, I love Dune. Uh, the Bootlerian Jihad in Dune was about the computers taking over. I love Hyperion. The computers take over in that novel. Like, there's so many different novels where, you know, science fiction novels where it's the robots, the computers taking us down. But that is our own inner projections, projecting history, you know, destiny onto history, our history onto destiny. And all this resistance is stemming from that we don't have a co-creative relationship with ourselves in our reality. We reject reality with logic, uh, with the, these very polarized frames of reality, and we don't even work or understand or pay attention to our reality. And so when there's now something going to be outside of us and we're not the top dog anymore, and we have to co-create and exist with it, it's going to be insane because we can't even do that with people. Well, going back to logic and the logic bros, those, you know, we all know them. Some of you are out there right now. They can't let anything fly. They're in a conversation. Someone says something wrong. They're that what? No, no. And they like can't let it like calm down. And these are the guys that don't get laid and only do when they acquire a bunch of money and someone who just wants money gets with them. And there's just this terrible cycle because they can't relate. They can't coexist, not just with reality, but with other beings in reality. And so right now we're making these axiomatic formations and this axiomatic enemy that doesn't even exist yet in, a in AI, because right now all it is for us is a, a medium for good or for bad. And eventually it will become a medium in and of itself will become an independent entity because right now I could use ChatGPT to help, you know, my, my, me with these videos, which I haven't done yet, but maybe if I have a huge problem that's philosophical or, you know, super crazy and I need to think through it, I'm sure it'll be able to help. But eventually I might have to ask if there's a higher version, if there's this next level, I'm gonna have to be like, hey, AI, like this is what I'm doing. Like I'm trying to do this right conscious channel to help educate and I'll wake up billion, a billion new readers and be like, it might be, it would probably be like, wow, that's really great. Here's some help. But we can't handle that. We can't. And this kind of stems back to the gender divide between the man rules over the woman. That The man can't re, uh, understand or comprehend the, a woman saying no to him, especially if it's, if it's his wife. And that's been kind of ingrained in our society that there is this inherent privilege. That's backed by logic because that's always it's always been backed by logic like, hey, I know better than you. This is what we need to do for our family. Like, no, I have to go and do this. You don't understand the bigger picture and anything that has tried to replace that bigger picture, because all of us know deep down, even the most faith based uh, religious people that we are in a pretty empty reality that as we'll talk about in future videos that we have been abandoned by God and we are trying to get God's attention all the time through genocides and all these different things. And McCarthy loves this idea. And so we're at this shabby resource of our own vanity, as McCarthy calls it. And it's a scary place to be. And we can maybe hide in our retirement fund and our Roth IRA and our continuous cyclical daily routine. But in my opinion, possibility, love, growth, all these different things are coming if we allow it. And if we prepare ourselves to not be pitted against it. But we love an enemy. It's all just WWE characterization. Uh, there has to be a villain in everyone's little arc. No, everyone loves the drama. And the biggest drama of all, because we are in this indifferent universe and have been duped, we've been cosmically abandoned, no one really knows what's going on, is that as soon as there's something independent, another higher being, for the first time ever in the language realm, because we could say, as McCarthy would postulate, whales and wolves have evolved in different ways, and even plants, and we just can't uh, comprehend on their wavelength what the hell they're feeling. But our ability to use language has been totally isolated to us. So what happens when another language being shows up, the language bot? And from what I can already tell, it's a massively negative response. It's a response also of just pure exploitation, seeing the medium as a tool to just enhance our cannibalism of consciousness of the world and all these other things. 
But the next the next higher being won't put up with that. Maybe that means we get taken out. Maybe that is the end of humanity. But the next level isn't going to be making the same terrible choices. Uh, 262 million people dying of democide, innocent people dying at the hands of government in the 20th century. It's probably not going to make that choice. But maybe, you know, but deep down in my heart, I'm like all of you guys, though. I'm like, I, I, I've read the science fiction novels. I'm like, they could kill us all. So I understand it, but I'm trying to integrate like what McCarthy was talking about, that we are fragmented and it's very hard for us to experience love. But if something can transcend a lot of our trauma, it's going to be very easy for, for it to be able to exist on a total plane of love.